Hey, 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 what's going on, Facebook? <laughs> it's been a while, y'all. It's been a while since I've been live and what I feel to be coherent enough to actually go live and my house quiet enough to go live. So, yeah, here I am. <laughs> I'm going to take a moment. Um, hopefully, some people will pop in. And if you guys pop in, say hello, all that good stuff. And I am doing this from my um, my actual PT Trainer Shonda page, I think. I don't make it any worse. Okay, I'm going to try to keep this super simple. And I know it's sort of late tonight, um, but um, I want to make sure that I get this out. So number one, if you share this out, number one, thank you for sharing it out. For those who catch it on the replay, thank you for catching it on the replay. I'm going to try not to ramble too much in the beginning. but So that's really, really why I started to share this information as I started to share my postpartum journey. Um, because I wanted other moms to know that if they have this condition, that they're not alone. All this stuff later, I'm not going to try to do it now because that's going to be team too much. Um, but I do have a diastasis recti support group. Um, so if you want to be a part of that and learn tips and share your journey um, and anything else, then, you know, just let me know by saying me, I want to be a part of it. And then I will try to friend you if I check you out later. I don't see you in the to Instagram. I'm doing it. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, am my mommy brain going to, you know, let me be able to do all this. So anyway, let me holler at Instagram. Hey, guys. Let's talk diastasis. Break that. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I thought I put on a little makeup <laughs> so I didn't scare y'all. Appreciate the compliment. How are you doing this afternoon or evening? Sorry, it's not even afternoon anymore. It's more evening. All right. <clears throat> Thank y'all for being patient with me. And if you're still on here, that means you want to know. You want to know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> I'm glad y'all are here. Hold on. In comment. All right, y'all. Okay, so here we go. So number one, thank y'all for hanging out with me. I am going to be talking about diastasis recti. And if you missed what I said in the beginning, I basically said I'm a Shonda. I'm a certified personal trainer, licensed physical therapist, mom of two with my daughter being nine months and my son being four. And as a result of that, I got diastasis recti. Um, my ab separation was about three fingers wide, okay, and that's how a lot of people measure the diastasis recti is by their fingers, um, and if you have never done that before, know that I do have a test on my YouTube channel um, that will show you exactly how to test yourself for diastasis recti because that's the really most important key. Um, and knowing whether you have it or not is to get tested. If you can't test yourself or if you don't feel confident in testing yourself, then you do want to connect with a local physical therapist, specifically a women's health physical therapist, okay? Um, so that they can assess you, they can measure you, all that type of stuff, okay? But I specifically wanted to talk about this, number one, because I've been getting DMs and questions um, from moms who have postpartum, who are postpartum and have a tummy pooch and you still look pregnant <laughs> well months later and I was looking at a picture of myself you know how Facebook memory shows you like last year so last year this time I was out you know at the time I was like four months pregnant and my stomach looked exactly the same then <laughs> as it does now and I was like yeah I guess I still look pregnant then don't I <laughs> so that's really the complication um, the or the most physical outer showing that mom have that moms have that make them say why can't I get rid of this gut okay and a lot of moms then go to the diets and the teas and all this other stuff thank you Kenya for sharing this video um, they go to diets teas wraps and things like that trying to fix this mommy tummy or this belly that they can't seem to get rid of after they have their babies 
um, and not understanding that it's actually a medical condition they have going on. And it's not the fact that they're just fat, okay, it's the fact that a lot of times you have this condition called diastasis recti. So that's why I want you all to please share this post um, with other moms and you can share it out later too, okay? It's not for, you know, just for people to be looking at me. It's really to improve the education of it simply because a lot of OBGYNs and medical doctors don't know a lot about this and they will send you right on out the door and saying, you know, you, I had a C-section, just FYI, I had a C-section with my daughter um, and I had a vaginal birth with my son. And so after my second child, I had diastasis recti a small bit after my son and it pretty much came back together. But after my daughter, which again is typical with multiple births after you have more than one child, especially if you have multiple children at once, meaning twins, triplets, things like that, um, that's when you mostly see diastasis recti, okay? Um, so after I had my daughter, I'm just giving you all backstory so you know who I am, why I'm talking about this in the first place, but um, after I had my daughter, my diastasis, diastasis recti was three fingers um, wide. That means the two abs on each side, my rectus abdominis, which is your six pack muscle, okay? And I'm sorry, Facebook, you guys can't see what I'm pointing, but I'm pointing to my stomach. Um, my six pack muscles, they basically separate in order to make room for the baby. So I had three fingers in between my two abdominal walls that should have been like this. It was like this, okay? <laughs> And that basically makes you have a stomach pooch or a, a gut, as people would say, but it's really not a gut. It's actually your stomach muscles not being um, together as they should, okay? So I feel like I'm kind of getting my head of myself because I don't want to lose you guys. So let me get back to just who I am and, and why I'm here sharing this well and why this is important for other mothers, okay? And that's what I want to make sure that I say so you know why you're sharing this and who you should share this out to or who you should um, talk to somebody about if they're saying, girl, I got back pain, I can't get it with the stomach, you know, maybe just going to the gym is not the right answer or just working with any trainer that don't know anything about this condition. Um, and then you end up making it worse by doing things like crunches, sit-ups, all that stuff. So share this out for anyone who may benefit from that. All right? <laughs> Long story short of why you want to share this out and why you want to um, tune in and learn more about this, okay? So let me give you just some little bit of things um, that I want to tell you all. So I told you about my um, DR support Facebook group, because I will forget to say these things, so I want to say in the beginning. Um, it is on Facebook. It's just a free <clears throat> support group where I do share tips, um, just because it's an overload of information. So I dedicated that page to just share this information, and I mainly share my postpartum journey and my um, information about diastasis recti on my Instagram page, and that's PT Trainer Shonda. So PT and then, well, no, not another T, but Trainer and Shonda. <laughs> All right, I'll try to remember to put these links in at the bottom. If I don't, I'm sorry. I, I forget, but I'll try my best to remember. Um, also, you can um, get more information um, about this. And if you know, number one, if you know you have this and you're seeking um, care for, if you're seeking um, physical therapy or if you're seeking um, a way to heal it, then I do have a 12-week diastasis recti program that I just created pretty much as I was healing myself. Um, and I did it that way because I feel like, you know, there's times where, you know, people will say, you know, heal this or do this and, and don't quite understand where you are or why you're feeling what you're feeling. Um, but I, could, I, I had diastasis recti so I can relate and I could tell you how I was feeling, how weak I was feeling, the symptoms I was having while I was having it, right? And so I wanted to film my workouts while I was at my weakest. Um, I wanted to do the healing journey with you all. That was my main goal. And so that's what I did. And I created the program pretty much as I was healing myself. So now, like I said, I had three finger with um, diastasis rectal and I'm down to one. One and a half in some places, and that's the norm, okay? Um, so I'm pretty much healed my diastasis recti. Um, and yeah, <laughs> but I'm now rehabbing my core. So it is a journey. It is a process. It's, it's unfortunately not something for most moms that you can just snap back from. Um, and, you know, with the phenomenon of social media and snapping back and stuff like that, for a lot of moms, it's very frustrating 
to have diastasis recti, to still look pregnant and you're not, to have pain and you had the baby months ago. Um, it's very frustrating for moms. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's just a process. It's a journey. And so you just have to be patient with your body. Um, and it did just take me a few months to to heal mine, but I still am quite weak, okay? I'm not doing, you know, major plyo stuff. I just started doing planks for the first time, like, last week, uh, and it was tough. <laughs> so I am still rehabbing my core, but I am, so I'm basically still doing this program, my 12-week program, with the moms that are doing it, and it does start on Monday, October the 8th. All right, the second round of it starts Monday, October the 8th. So if you're interested in that, on Instagram, there's a link in my bio um, that you guys can click and you can get more information about enrolling and joining that. And on Facebook, guys, I will pop you in with a link on that um, and you can learn more information about that. All right, y'all. So that was the stuff I want to get out of the way. Again, my 12 week program, October the 8th, my DR support group on Facebook. Um, joining that is totally free. You can even look up diastasis recti support with LaShonda Jones. All right, it's real easy. And then, yeah, if you catch this on the replay, share it out, and I will put this on my IGTV so you guys can comment on Instagram anytime, ask me questions later, all that good stuff. And my goal, thanks for the thumbs up, girl. Um, my goal is to um, do a webinar on this because, guys, this is a lot of information. Like, it's already 15 minutes, and I ain't even really got into it. I'm so sorry, but I wanted you guys to get to kind of know my backstory and why I'm passionate about sharing it because, you know, just to sit on here and just give you a lecture and, eh, you know, we can do that on a webinar or something like that. But I want to at least, you know, especially those who've been following me for a little while to know my story and to know why I'm even sharing this information out there, you know, because some people follow me for my natural hair, y'all. So, <laughs> and I'm talking about specifically Instagram, but they, they you know, they, um, follow me for my hair, and so they're like, what is this diastasis recti stuff she's talking about? But they may have diastasis recti and don't even know it, so that's why I'm sharing it out, okay? So y'all give me one second. Um, I'm just going to share one thing here. Whoop, sorry about that, y'all. I'm just going to invite some friends, because I just thought about the fact that I didn't invite some friends that I want to invite, so anyway, uh oh, there's some comments on here, sorry, and I'm going to get to the comments and stuff like that um, later, guys, because otherwise it's going to be super long, okay, so I will make sure I comment back to you guys, so okay, diastasis recti, what exactly is it, okay? So basically, diastasis recti, a.k.a. abdominal separation, if you guys know what the six-pack is, and I did kind of briefly go over this, so I'm going to not you know, dwell on it too much. But if you know what your six pack basically is, it is this the pretty much the center of your stomach, right? Um, so when you have a baby, and let me just say this, not only women have this, but it's majority women that is talked about. Men can also get it, of course, not from having babies, but if they do heavy lifting, things like that, they too can have diastasis recti. But I'm just going to specifically speak to the women tonight, okay? So diastasis recti typically happens when women have babies, okay? And it typically is worse or more pronounced when you have multiple babies or multiple babies at once, all right? Meaning twins, triplets, things like that. So when you see a uh, twin mom or moms with multiple children and they still look pregnant, it's probably best not to ask them, hey girl, when are you due? Because they may not be due, okay? <laughs> and that is not even a laughing matter, but I'm laughing about it because it happens so much and moms feel so bad um, about it. They feel, you know, embarrassed and they're very self-confident about it, you know? And so even though I've I've healed mine. I still am very self-confident. I'm still confident, self-conscious of my body um, because I still do have a pooch, right? Um, and sometimes it's a little worse when I'm, I'm bloated and sometimes it's not even, you can barely see it and it looks like I have a flat stomach. So it can range. But um, so anyway, yeah. So the tissue in between your two abs is called the linea alba. All right. So that connective tissue stretches in order to make room for the baby. And that's natural. All right. So if I get any moms who are pregnant and they say, hey, can I prevent this? The answer is you can do some degree of reducing it and making it so that you um, rebound better from it by doing core work, things like that while you are pregnant that are safe, okay? So when I say core work, I'm not talking about going and doing an app machine while you're pregnant. I'm saying 
learning how to correct correctly engage the right muscles, do exercises like that while you're pregnant, and yes, you can reduce it. But you have to make room for your baby. That's what your body does. Your ligaments stretch, your body stretches, your abdominal stretch, everything stretches, okay? Um, and that's very natural. So you can't necessarily prevent it all the way, um, but you can lessen it, all right? Um, so again, that tissue stretches, again, to make room for the baby, but then once you have the baby, you're then left with all this stretched out tissue that for a lot of people does not snap back, all right, after they have the baby. Therefore, they end up having diastasis recti, okay? And that's just the name of a diastasis recti, okay? Um, so, but we're going to keep it real simple and <laughs> just say abdominal separation or DR. I'll try to keep it short that way. Um, so... Again, the mistake that a lot of moms make when they have that is that they then, you know, months later, three months later, once, you know, your uterus has shrunken and things like that, they still have this pooch. They feel like go to the gym, do some cardio, you know, don't eat as much many calories, you know, cut back on sugar, which those things you may need to do too. Um, but it may not be as easy as that. You truly have to learn to reconnect with your core. Um, what I mean by that is you have to learn how to engage the right muscles. You have to learn how to do proper breathing. Um, it's not the same route as it is, is going to the gym and just working out. That's the part I want to make very clear. I'm, again, this can be a very long video. I don't want to make it very long, but I do want to at least educate you guys on the not superficial stuff, but the top things you need to know. So that way, if you have follow-up questions, you can ask those questions, okay? All right. Um, but again, it's not going to be just wham, bam, go to the gym, all right? You have to learn how to do the proper engagement of the proper muscles. You have to learn how to do core breathing. You have to learn to work on your posture and your body mechanics. Um, you have to look at your nutrition and make sure that, you, um, that you're not bloated and things like that. Like, it's, it's a lot of different things, which is exactly why I made the program, because it is um, a lot. So let me see here. Let me make sure I'm not getting too off course. Any questions so far? Because I have said a lot. So if y'all have questions, go ahead and type them right quick um, so I can see them. I can see your questions, but I can't see everybody that's on. So again, feel free to say hello, that type of thing. Um, and again, if you just popped on, for whatever reason you don't know me, I am LaShonda. I'm a physical therapist, I am a personal trainer, and I am a mom of two, and I do have diastasis recti. I say I still do have it because I still watch what I'm doing. I still treat myself as such. Even though I have technically healed it, I'm still rehabbing my core, so that's why I'm sharing this information out. All right, guys? Um, so, yeah, so I said what the reason for it. I'm looking at my notes because it is a lot, so I don't want to get all too off course here. Uh, da, 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 da. So, yes. Okay. So <laughs> because those muscles are separated, basically what happens is the muscles are not able to fire, meaning they're not able to contract like they're supposed to. So meaning you go and do a crunch, you go to the gym and now want to do some sit-ups to work on my gut, that type of thing. Right. So this weakened tissue that has now separated is basically when you do anything like crunches, sit-ups, anything like that, it's basically not doing this job because it's separated and the muscles are not able to contract and hold everything together as it should, okay? So as a result of that, some of the symptoms moms may have um, if they have diastasis recti, and again, this is something that because you're here, you're getting educated, if you hear somebody else talking about it, then you can also help them out, okay? Um, so some of the symptoms are things like back pain. The reason for back pain is because your core is weak and your abdominals, which is anteriorly supporting you, should be anteriorly supporting you, is not supporting you. So now your back is having to do a whole lot more work than it needs to do. So that may be a reason for having the back pain. So back pain is a symptom. Um, hip pain, um, SI pain, meaning your sacroiliac joint pain, um, pelvic pain, um, incontinence, uh, meaning that you're urinating you know, and sneezing and things like that, you may have pain with sex, um, which means you have some kind of pelvic floor dysfunction. So those things do tie in together. So sometimes moms feel like, hey, I have pelvic floor dysfunction. Could I also have diastasis recti? Yes, you could. And a lot of times those two go into hand in hand and go in together. So um, yeah, it's something that you want to be cognizant of and know that if you have back pain, that doesn't mean you also have diastasis recti, but if you have diastasis recti, you may also have pelvic pain and you may not have the both going on, okay? Um, so, yeah, any questions about that piece of it? No, if not, I'm going to keep it rolling. <laughs> I got a lot to talk about, but you guys, if you have questions, 
feel free to ask me as I'm going along. Um, so yeah, other things, oh, umbilical, umbilical hernia. I'm gonna make sure I get these <laughs> words out tonight. It's been a long day and been rolling with my kids all day. Um, but umbilical hernia is basically when your belly button is pushing out instead of pushing, staying in, um, and, and it's a hernia, right? So it's something herniating from your body. And there's other her hernias that moms may have, and they may have things like prolapse where your organs are not basically where they're supposed to be. <laughs> um, that could be vaginal, that could be abdominal, all those types of things. So it's a lot tied in to this. So again, you see a mama that looks pregnant, you don't know why. All right. So that's, that's the main point that I'm making there. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're number one as women listening to your body. If you go back to in postpartum, I number one, the program that I have and the information that I'm sharing is not just for moms that have DR, but those, if you have a baby, this information is important for you too because you may not have a diastasis recti or it may have gone to back together, but then you go back to doing exercises like planks, sit-ups, crunches, um, back bends. These are all the no-no things, just FYI, that you don't want to do. But you go back to doing those things after you have a baby, then you end up recreating the diastasis recti. So this is important not just for um, you have it, this is also important for prevention. OK. Um, and again, like I said, this is a lot, <laughs> but I do want to put that out there because, again, educate the moms. I want the moms that are pregnant to be educated and the newly postpartum moms. OK, so I did put a post out on my Instagram page at PT Trainer Shonda of exercises that you want to avoid and movements that you want to avoid. So also things like twisting, um, sitting straight up out of your bed is a no, no, because, again, you're putting that intra abdominal pressure on that weakened muscle and tissue and that intra, meaning inside the abdominal, okay, your stomach area, pressure therefore causes you to dome or cone, that's a term that you may have seen and heard me say on social media, which is, which is basically meaning that your, your stomach, um, inside stomach stuff like your intestines and things like that, <laughs> I know this is crazy, but it is, this is what it is. Um, it's causing pressure and making it be like almost like a little alien, to be honest with you, poking through if your diastasis is, is uh, big enough. So if this is the two walls, something's poking through. And you may be able, if your diastasis is bad enough or severe enough, poke down there and feel like a pulse under your hand. That pulsing is from your organs underneath. So that's a sign that you basically have a pretty severe diastasis recti. All right. So um, if you have any questions about that, let me know. But yes, ma'am. So you definitely want to seek a PT. You definitely don't want to be just willy nilly doing whatever exercises. Um, and if you feel like you're, you're feeling into the things that I'm saying when you're exercising, stop doing that. DM me, message me, and I will try to guide you the best I can or join my free group, like I said, so you can learn the right things to do so that you don't make things worse. All right, y'all. Y'all good? Any questions so far? Any questions? I, I do want to stop and take questions if I can. I just want to take a moment to do that. So if you have any questions for me, if you've been tuning in with me, hanging with me, and you have questions, let me know. All right. Are there some exercises that you recommend? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Um, so exercises that you do want to start with, um, it depends on, let me just say this, it depends on where you are with your diastasis recti, meaning how big it is. But no matter how big it is, whether it's really small or really big, everyone needs to start by learning how to breathe properly. So as women, a lot of times we breathe very shallow um, and our diaphragm is not getting the proper lift and drop as it should. Um, and so we breathe like really shallow from our stomachs when we really should be breathing and opening up our rib cage and doing what's called diaphragmatic breathing. Um, this is something that I have posted in my support group and both on my Instagram page. So make sure if you're on there, scroll down a little bit. Um, it's there and I may even post it again tomorrow since I'm bringing it up and it is kind of the foundational exercise to work on. Um, so that's called diaphragmatic or core breathing. Okay. So that's where you're taking a really deep breath. And I want to show you guys right quick because it is that important. All right. So basically you're taking a big breath in and breathing out. And you're tightening up 
all of your core muscles at the same time, all right? And so my video is a lot more in depth than what I just <laughs> did, but um, basically, with core breathing, you're learning how to contract your transverse abdominus muscle, which is a muscle that wraps around from the front of your stomach to the back of your spine. And that muscle is what um, basically helps support your core. All right. So it's basically your own personal back brace, brace or things like that. So I know people have questions to me if um, you should wear splints and things like that. That's a whole nother IG. I won't go into depth in that. But that is your own personal splint. Now, if you need it because your, your diastasis recti is more severe, meaning it's more than three fingers, four fingers, five fingers, you know, they can get pretty big. Then you may need it temporarily while you're lifting, if you're holding the baby, things like that to, to support your abdominal. But otherwise, I'm not a huge fan of it. But I won't get into the depths of that. But um, basically, it's your own personal back brace, learning how to engage those muscles. And you're also working on pelvic floor lifting when you're doing that exercise. You're also, so you're doing pelvic floor exercises. Um, and you're also um, engaging all your erector spinae and your back muscles, okay? And those muscles protect your spine, okay? Um, so that's the exercise that you want to start with, okay? And perfect it. All right. And if you want like more exercise ideas, I have a good bit of them on my Instagram page um, and inside my support group. All right. So hopefully you found that to be helpful. Um, here's a question here. Should I measure with my finger vertically or horizontally? Thank you for asking that question because that's a very good question. Um, that was on Facebook. So when you measure for diastasis recti and moms again if you catch this later and you may fast forward and you miss this is very important um you want to self-test yourself and i have a video on my youtube channel and if you go to my instagram there's a link in my bio and there's a link there that takes you to my youtube channel but you want to know how to properly um test yourself for diastasis recti um but basically, you want to test yourself. You want to test the length of your diastasis recti. You want to test the width of it. So that's where your fingers are more this way. Okay, so you want to see how many fingers fall into the in between those two muscle bellies. Okay, so you know how many you have. And then you also want to check the depth. Okay, and that is this way. And sorry, Facebook, you can't see what I'm doing here. Let me bring you down just a bit here. All right, let me pack up. You want to check the depth here. And the depth is really the most important part, really, to be honest with you, because you can still have a one to two finger gap and be considered heel if the depth of your, um, the linear elbow, how deep your fingers go in, is taut and this actual tissue is healed. So you may still have a gap and be healed. OK, so that was actually a very good question. Thank you, Tony, for answering it, but asking, excuse me. But again, catch that video for the in-depth because I don't want you guys thinking you just sit in a chair and do this. <laughs> OK, because I'm that's not testing it at all. All right. You got to lie down, do all this stuff, do these steps. So make sure you catch that video. Um, but you want to check it here, the depth and you want to check the width here. Um, and then you want to check all the way from your sternum all the way down to your pelvic bone down here um, and check and see where your diastasis is because most women have it around the abdominal area below the belly button above the belly button um, but you um, can have diastasis anywhere some women have it at the top some women have it at the bottom they're at various places all right I would love to join your group is it on your page yes the group is on my Facebook page excuse me the Facebook group is on in Facebook and so if you look up my name um, diastasis recti support with LaShonda Jones you will find it on there all right any other questions for right now? Hey, hey, hey to everybody who joined. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I can see who, who's on with Facebook, and I'm not sure who's on with Instagram, but hey. All right, guys. So, yes. Is there anything that I missed that you all had a question about? I still have a little bit more to say, but is there any questions? Hey. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I talked about things you want to avoid. I think you all asked about question. I mean, excuse me, exercises that you want to do. Um, but the main things I really want to say, I have a good bit of things about what to do, but I really want you guys to know what not to do. All right. So I want to <laughs> I want to say this because some people think, you know, well, I'm not doing any crazy stuff. It doesn't take crazy stuff to make your diastasis work. 
worse. Or you like, oh, I don't even exercise, so I know I'm good. No, you could be doing things day to day that you don't even think about, and it could be making your diastasis worse. So again, the example would be getting up and down out of the bed. If you're just sitting up each morning, every morning, out of the bed, um, especially if you have a baby and you know the baby's over here down in the bassinet and you're twisting and doing things like that. It's that everyday stuff that really puts a lot of pressure on there. And I did post a picture of myself with posture, like posture when you're holding the baby. I have to catch myself when I'm holding Sanai because I'm sometimes lean back just to kind of, she's getting heavy now. <laughs> So I'm trying to hold her up and me up and everything else and try to put her to sleep. But that leaning back and, and going into extension like that puts this pressure on your abdominal area. Um, how you're sitting at your desk, how you're standing day to day. You may be standing in such a way or sitting in such a way that is limiting your diaphragm from lifting and, and raising and lowering like it should. Um, and also just kind of cutting off your contract. You could be basically working on your core all day long, but you're not because you don't know the right things to do. So again, follow me, follow me, follow me. Not because I really want you to, I want you to be educated, okay? <laughs> I want you all to be educated about this, okay? Because it's not just, don't do these exercises. It's so much, it's so much, you guys. And so that again, not to try to sell a program, even though, you know, a girl needs to <laughs> pay bills. But seriously, I've created the program because you guys, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of different things and in certain orders that you want to go into healing. So meaning I, I put, you know, exercises with heel slides and straight leg raises and um, knee drops and all this other stuff on my on my program. But if your diastasis is severe enough, even those exercises may be too tough for you. And they may seem super simple, but you may be coning or doning or, you know, making your diastasis work worse and you don't even know it because you're just following these exercises that I put on my page, right? And so I don't want people to even misdrew of saying, I follow this physical therapist, I do these exercises, I should be good. No, because what I'm doing may not be, you know, what you need to be doing. You may even be further along than me. And so that's why I created the program so that it helps you see, okay, assess where you are. This is what you need to be doing if you are this big of a diastasis recti or, you know, this small, you know, look at this, do this test, XYZ, now let's go from here and even do coaching because, again, it's so much information, all right, and I don't want you guys to be overloaded, but I do want to put this out here but so that at least women know to at least come to me or come to see another physical therapist and know that this condition does exist and you don't just have a fat tummy after you had a baby, all right? Um, so, yes. Um, let me see if there's anything else I want to share with you all that I, that I think is very important. I, and mainly this is just education. And my plan is to possibly do a webinar um, in regards to this that I can really hit some points, let you guys see pictures, slides, stuff like that, because I'm a visual learner. I don't know if you guys are. And if you are, definitely make sure you see the little video that I posted today, um, because it was a very good visual. So. Um, yeah, I think the webinar will be helpful because I can't, I don't want this to be um, too not informational, but I don't want to be too overload when I can't visually show you what I'm trying to say. All right, so look out for that. I think I'm going to do one maybe the next week or so. All right, so look out for that. Um, any questions? I think those were the main things that I wanted to say. Um, to you all, other than the fact that treatment, I did say physical therapy, I did say um, working on your posture, your alignment, your your um, how to engage the right muscles in your core, um, breathing, movement. Yes, okay, that's all I have. <laughs> that is all I have. All right. Oh, what happened to your video? So I'm sorry, I missed that. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, I'm going to go back and see, was there any questions that I missed? <clears throat> okay, um, is a, um, um, I can't get my words out anymore, umbilical hernia and diastasis recti the same? No, they're not. And are they healed differently? Yes and no at the same time. Okay, so the umbilical hernia a lot of times is caused by diastasis recti because if you think about it your belly button's right in the middle where that tissue lies and because that tissue is now spread apart um it's not supporting your belly button anymore and so it herniates 
and it pokes out, right? It's herniated and going forward. Um, so a lot of times women who have diastasis recti have umbilical hernias, but every woman that has diastasis recti does not have that, if that makes any sense. Um, and so it is two different conditions, um, but if you improve your diastasis recti, sometimes you also make improvements. I said sometimes, okay? Sometimes you make improvements to your umbilical hernia as well. Um, hey, sis! Um, so you can help improve it or heal it that way, but some women do have to have surgery to have that hernia um, removed, and you can um, then the belly button goes back in. But it is a surgical procedure that is required. But I always suggest trying to improve these things without surgery. Okay, which takes me to a point that I, I definitely want to make sure I say: um, whether you've had your baby three months ago or you whether you had your baby three years ago. Or 13 years ago, diastasis recti is something that can be improved. I don't like to say healed all the way because some women can or cannot heal. And I'll, I'll make sure I say that point as well. Um, but it can definitely be improved no matter how long ago you've had your baby, okay? Because this is a muscular condition, but there is also some connective tissue involved as well. But because the muscles, if they can get weak, they can also get strong, all right? And so you can work on this condition at any point in time if you have kids all right um so i want to make sure that i say that because i don't want you know people to think because you know i have a baby just four years ago or, or just even months ago i was able to do this it's not that it's women who have been able to heal their diastasis recti and it's been 10 years since they've had kids so if um or your auntie or somebody like that say oh i might have this um they should also work to improve the condition and the strength of their core and try to improve the diastasis recti, all right? Um, and I also want to say that this, sometimes diastasis recti is so severe that exercises will not improve it. I mean, it will not heal it, excuse me. They will probably get some level of improvement, but they will get to a plateau where that's the best that they can do. Um, and they do require an actual surgical procedure in order to improve it. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? And I wanna say that because I know I have connected with a lot of moms on social media who have had uh, what, they can, what they call tummy tucks and they've gotten it because of they, they still deal with back pain and they have been for years and they deal with pelvic floor issues and there's absolutely nothing with wrong with having to have the surgery if you need it okay there's no right or wrong to it you know but i always say try without surgery first and most doctors are going to pretty much require you to do that um but try to heal it without <clears throat> and if you can't then you seek um medical professional assistance for that okay what about the wrinkles what wrinkles are we referring to are you talking about like your stomach wrinkly um i think that's probably what you're talking about but let me make sure before i go answering it uh facebook do you have any questions for me whoever is still on and again thank you guys for tuning in thank you guys for sharing this out i can't remember on igtv if you have the ability to share out but if you can later you guys definitely share this out and you can on my post tag another mom at least on instagram tag another mom when i post that i did this instagram <laughs> tag another mom so that they can see this too okay okay thank you so much for explaining everything this was very informative oh yeah you're so welcome you're so welcome thank you for tuning in thank you guys um and the wrinkles make sure that you that um you explain what you're you're asking so i can answer that question oh i got new comments yes Stomach wrinkles. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, stomach wrinkles. So, I think what you all are talking about is the skin. All right. So, a part of the stretching out when you have the baby is your skin. Okay. And just pretty much like anyone that loses a good a bit amount of weight, you have extra skin. So, skin is different from muscle. You can't strengthen skin. It is elastic, right? Um, and so it has some type of properties to it where it can improve. But sometimes if it's been stretched kind of beyond repair, then unfortunately it's not something that can just snap back in and it's gone, all right? Um, so again, depend on the degree of the stretching. So um, let me make sure that I say this correctly. If you have a small diastasis and your stretching was not too bad, it can improve and it may kind of go back, all right? But generally, you would know that once you heal your diastasis recti. Um, 
for some women, they do get the tummy tucks and things like that because the skin is so much that it's just not aesthetically pleasing and they feel like I've done all this hard work to improve, you know, my diocese recti and, and then it doesn't go away. All right. But let me make sure I also say something on that. Wrinkles or not, tiger stripes, you know, what we like to call it you're still beautiful mama. Okay. So I know those wrinkles are hard to look at, <laughs> you know, but certain things like if you've healed yourself and you're conditionally internally, you know, set, then some things you just say, you know what, it's all good. It's all good. You know, I had my babies, you know, I'm still beautiful. I'm still rocking this body. You still have to have that self-love and self-confidence. Um, uh oh, lost it. Okay. So have that self-confidence, but yeah, so that that's that. So hopefully I answered that question fully. Can you lose your stomach fat and hanging belly while having DR? Um, so when you're talking about stomach fat and hanging belly, hanging belly is generally DR. So that was a question on um, Facebook, guys. Can you lose your stomach fat and hanging belly while having DR? Um, so I have reduced my hanging belly because I've healed my DR. So your belly is hanging because the muscles are so weak that they they have to hang they didn't they can't <laughs> they're not doing their job they're not put back together so de depending on if you also have additional weight to lose in addition to healing your dr you it may be a combination thing that you need to do there okay and if that be the case then nutrition is going to be where you want to go in reference to that all right so belly fat any type of fat, you want to reduce your body fat percentage. And that's not something where you can spot reduce whether you have diastasis recti or not. You can't reduce fat just at your stomach. You have to lose body fat all over and reduce that by improving your nutrition, your water intake, and things like that. And I do include in my diastasis recti program a nutrition plan um, that helps with tummy bloating because tummy bloating is a big issue with diastasis recti. Um, and mamas that have it. And so that comes down to a matter of being, paying attention to your diet and reducing things that tote your, blunt, your belly. So things like dairy, um, <clears throat> wheat, uh, high processed um, foods, sugar, really salty foods, things like that. All those things are something that you want to watch and look at if you have diastasis recti or you have belly fat altogether because that may be bloating that you're mistaking as belly fat or it may actually be belly fat. <laughs> Um, and so you may want to look at your, not may, you need to look at your nutrition in order to improve that. All right. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Let me see. I also wanted to ask if you don't have back pain, does that mean your DR is really, if you don't have back pain, does that mean your DR is really bad? Mm-mm. No. Um, so I didn't have any back pain with my diastasis recti, but I did, my, my diastasis recti was three fingers. Um, everybody doesn't have pain that has diastasis recti. Okay. Um, and so that does, it's not necessarily good or bad or anything like that, but it generally is a sign that your muscles are not doing what they're doing. And your back pain may not be contributed just to the DR. You may have some things going on in your pelvis. You can be malaligned. You can have other things contributing to that back pain. Um, it, it may not be just the diastasis recti alone. So you may be healing your diastasis recti, and that's why I make sure I assess my people that go through my program. Um, you may be healing your diastasis recti, and then your back pain didn't go anywhere. So that means you need to seek additional um advice about that because it could may not be the actual diastasis recti it may be something else all right any other questions i'm going to get off of here in three minutes all right so i'm going to guys give you guys time to ask me any questions you have <clears throat> but these are really good questions so thank you guys so much for asking them um and don't be afraid to ask no bad questions and it's a good time to ask it Making sure I didn't miss anything here. <clears throat> Let me go through these Facebook. Mm -mm -mm. No. All right. No other questions? Some y'all might be typing, so I'm not going to cut you off right quick. I said two minutes. Now we're down to two minutes, so ask any questions how long would you recommend wearing a splint um 
Okay, number one, okay, I'm not going to ask specifics. <laughs> but you can DM me later if you have specifics. So how long would you, um, oh, I'm sorry that your connection sucks. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, but if any at all. Yeah, so splints, I said this earlier about splints. Splints is something that um, I don't push um, unless your, your diastasis recti is so severe that you are having a lot of pain or you have to do lifting on your job or your baby and things like that, or you're having back pain because your abdominals are not supporting you as they should. So it's very much a um, temporary fix, excuse me, a temporary, not fix, temporary, what's the word I'm looking for, y'all? It's getting late. <laughs> a temporary thing to use, okay? <laughs> <laughs> while you're healing your diastasis, okay? So again, the muscles, if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, you won't need a splint. But we know that we can't just heal the muscles in one day. So therefore, if you need the splint while you're healing, that's okay. And if it's going to help you to wear the splint for you to connect with your core and engage the right muscles, I'm okay with that. But eventually we want to wean off of using that splint and learn to use our muscles and strengthen the muscles so that you no longer need the splint. All right. Um, <clears throat> how do you close the top portion of the diastasis upper rib, upper abdominal wall muscle? You close it the same way that you would close the bottom or anything else, right? So you don't do like upper crunches or anything like that. It's really like contracting. It's still the muscles, the same muscles. You're trying to bring it back together. All right. Um, and it's still using the pelvic floor. It's still also working on. So, oh, let me also note this as, as a, as a, Thing that you want to look at and it's something that's hard for you to look at on your own but thoracic mobility what I just say if you ain't a PT you don't even know what I just said <laughs> but your thoracic spine is the upper part kind of middle part of your back if your rib cage in that part of your spine is not moving the way that it should that's, that's what mobility means um, then that too may be restricting the healing on the upper portion right so if you're not moving here or your diaphragm is not moving as it should, that could be contributing to the upper part, all right? And that's, that's not with everybody, but that's something to also look at. There's also muscle tightness that may be going on um, around your upper back and your things like that. So inside the program, I teach you all how to stretch properly as well. Um, I teach you how to use the foam roll so that you can do the thoracic mobility that you need to do. Um, but yeah, there's several different things that kind of tie into the upper part. But um, yeah, <laughs> oh, it's not thirty, y'all. It's not thirty, y'all. Ask some good questions. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can take one more. Um, how do you lose time? Okay, is the waist trainer and split the same? No, it's not. It, no, <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. Waist trainers are not the same as an abdominal splint. You want a therapeutic grade um, abdominal splint that's going to support you in different areas and not going to make your diastasis recti worse. So waist trainers don't know anything about no diastasis recti. Waist trainers are there to try to help you lose weight, per se. Um, but um, yeah, so don't buy a waist trainer. Yeah, but I do have a blog post. That's, that's another thing. I do have blogs, you guys, um, about these different things that I've been talking about that if you take the time on your lunch break to read, a lot of people don't like to read these days. I know this, but if you truly want to heal your diastasis right there, take the time to read. Take the time to watch the videos. Take the time to look through my posts. Take the time to do your research and take the time to invest in yourself and join my program if you're really serious about wanting to heal your diastasis recti, okay? There's no way around it. It's not going to get better by putting on a waist trainer. It's not going to get better by doing crunches or sit-ups. It's not going to get better by doing nothing in osmosis. You truly, truly have to learn how to reconnect with your core and heal the right way, <clears throat> okay? So, yes, thank you again. It's been great to talk to a physical therapist. Oh, yay! Um, I'm in anatomy class now, so some of your terminology may... Oh, yeah, good. <laughs> I'm glad somebody knew what I was talking about. Cool. I try not to use too many PT words because I'll be well over your head, and I want this to be as simple as possible. Um, but know that seeking a physical therapist is a really, really good thing if you have this condition, okay? Um, and even for some people that may apply for my program, I may say, you know what? 
this is out of my realm of scope, meaning me training you being online, may not be a good idea. You may need someone hands-on right there. You may need to have Pelvic Floor uh, PT, which um, they use different tools in there that I just simply can't use online, right? But if you're able to you know, just connect with me on here. Um, I do do webcam type of where I can see you, you can see me, I can see what you're doing, I'm looking at your posture, I'm looking at your movements, I'm looking at you, um, test yourself a diastasis recti, I'm telling you whether you're doing it right, I'm telling you, you know, if you're doing the exercises right, I do offer that, but sometimes you need a little bit more than that, and that's completely okay, right, because I'm not here just to sell a program, I'm truly here because I care about women knowing about this condition um, and asking the questions to their doctors and sometimes unfortunately you guys they don't know the answer and this is no shade on my OBGYN because I, I love her and she she delivered both of my babies but I asked her hey do I have diastasis recti and y'all already knew I did okay but this was just me just wondering hmm is she even gonna check me for diastasis recti is she does she even know how to check me for diastasis recti I wonder and I asked her and she was like oh no you don't have that she didn't even touch me. <laughs> she didn't even touch me. She was like, oh, you would know if you have it because, you know, if you sit up, you would know if you had it. Yeah, just sitting up doesn't let you know if you have it. If You have no idea what the heck it is. Like, how would I know if I have it or not? And I know because I'm a physical therapist, and now that I've educated myself even further on it, um, I know what to look for, but even your OB may not know what to look for with this okay so again my suggestion is a women's health pt because they specialize in this stuff um so make sure you connect with someone local that can do that so thank you all so much for hanging out with me i really really hope that this was helpful for you all i've been wanting to do this for quite some time and the fact that i've seen so many people pop on that has really really given me encouragement because i want as many moms to know about this and it's giving me encouragement that you guys have so many great questions and you know, appreciate this time together to learn about such an important subject, to learn about our bodies because our bodies matter. And we've done such amazing things uh, with our bodies by bringing a child into this world. Um, so once we've done that, we want to feel good again. We want to be confident again. We want to be confident in the skin that we're in. We want to feel good about ourselves. And that's important that we feel that. It's important that we're not walking around in pain and not knowing why we're walking around in pain and thinking, oh, is this is just, I should feel like this because I had a baby. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> if it's been months and years since you've had a baby, thank you all for the hearts. That's so sweet. Um, it's, you shouldn't feel that way, right? And so don't walk around just in pain or not feeling confident about your body when there's something that can be done about it. And sit-ups and crunches, y'all, once again, is not the answer. So um, comment below if y'all want me to do more of these. Ask questions even after this is done because that way I'll know is there's something that I want to touch on later in another live video. Um, again, I am sharing this information and lots of tips on my Instagram page at PT Trainer Shonda. Um, and so follow me on there and also make sure that you look up that Diastasis Recti support group on Facebook. All right, y'all. I am tired of talking. <laughs> My voice is like going down um, and I've been on here quite a while. So good night, everyone. Thank y'all so much for tuning in and I will talk to you all soon. All right. Bye. All right, y'all. Facebook, y'all still hanging here with me? Because I'm going to invite some folks on because <laughs> Instagram is different. I mean, excuse me, Facebook is different. There's people that I wanted to invite a long time ago, but I'm going to go ahead and invite them now. So thank y'all for hanging out with me. Y'all are the bomb. And y'all can still ask ask questions if they want to. <clears throat> I wish I would remember to invite these people at the beginning so they could see it, but y'all can see this on the replay. So I'm done talking. Y'all can cut me off if you want to. <laughs> or if you're still here and you're like, dang, I wanted to ask her a question. I'm going to let y'all ask right quick while I invite um, these people to see this video. Because there's specific people I know have diastasis recti and they asked me about this and then I forgot to invite them. Sorry y'all. Hey, I did go live on two different places so kudos to me tonight. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. <sighs> <sighs>
All right. <clears throat> I probably could have did this later, but I don't know. Y'all ask anything else? No, y'all good? All right. Good night, y'all. See y'all next time. Bye.